Hi, so we are reconvening for the second part of this lecture. Um, we left off talking about integrated reporting and how that um, sort of brings together financial reporting, sustainability reporting, and then helps you to fine tune and determine the strategic vision for your business um, when, you're, when you're utilizing both of these platforms to make decisions about your supply chain or your initiatives or your product line or how you manufacture, how you distribute, how you store inventory, um, just the myriad of decisions that go into running a business. So this is um, how we're sort of segueing into what, what is a sustainability report? What's a good sustainability report? What kinds of things um, go in to an, to an organization's planning and execution of sustainability reporting. And let me just preface all this by saying it is an expensive process. It is a um, extremely complex and multifaceted process. It's going to involve pretty much everybody in your organization. Um, some companies have been doing this for, you know, decades, like Apple, like Nike, like Microsoft. Um, and some folks are really new, you know, new to the show and they're being pressured to do it. Um, some organizations have sustainability reports that look more like marketing pieces than they do a hard look at metrics and assessments and baselines and targets. So um, this is from the um, Businesses for Social Responsibility report that I was talking about earlier, that's 60 pages that I just am asking you to skim and get a flavor of rather than eat the whole meal. Um, but this is, this is really important. This is how do you build a good report? Um, so first, I mean, you can't report on everything. So how are you gonna establish priorities? How are you gonna develop a strategy? Um, they talk about conducting, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail, uh, looking at materiality. Again, you really want to report things that are going to be impactful in your organization. So, for example, um, access to fresh water is a really big deal if you're Heineken and your product is 97% fresh water. And maybe not as imperative to somebody like uh, FedEx. Uh, that's, you know, obviously way more um, concerned about um, decarbonizing their fleet, for example, or um, gender equity and management, things like that. So materiality, you've got to conduct some sort of review around that. Um, set from that, you're going to, and, and you're going to do that while you engage with um, lots of different kinds of stakeholders. And then you're looking at like, what are our goals? What are our peers doing? That's called a benchmark. Like, do we need to reinvent the wheel or are there already ways of assessing um, how to measure our waste reduction efforts? Um, who's going to be reading it? And um, what's the difference between um, actual frameworks that are directing us in how to conduct this review and um, and our gaps. Um, let's make a high level outline and talk about who in the organization is gonna be involved. Some research and development, some product development folks, certainly our accounting, our marketing, our um, strategic development team, our finance team. Um, then like, how are we gonna get all of this information together? Who's gonna collect it? Where's it gonna live? How are we going to um, assess that it's that it's authentic and credible and um, you know that the instruments used to collect the data are are viable. Um, and then how are we going to um, put this into a report that's going to make sense to our stakeholders? How are we going to index it so people can access what they're interested in? Um, and then it's got to go through some sort of a final approval, your executive team, it's called your C-suite. So people like your CEO, your CFO, um, your CSO, et cetera, et cetera, have got to have some sort of um, way that they can look at it and uh, make a final approval. Um, how are you going to publish it? How are you going to communicate to folks? Is it going to be digital, hard copy? Is it PDF? Is it going to be an interactive report? And then um, reviewing how you did. 
So this really just kind of blows up what I just talked about, but there's a couple new words in here that I think are really important that you understand. Um, so we've talked about materiality, right? So um, st strategy, sustainability context, this concept right here of KPI, key performance indicators is really critical to the whole idea of sustainability reporting. So it's dialing into um, how do we um, assess and report very specific items. So if I'm looking like when we looked at the greenhouse gas inventory, if I'm looking at um, carbon emissions, we know that we're guided by the GHG protocol to accumulate data based on those three scopes, right? Scope one, you know, direct carbon emissions from my manufacturing facilities, et cetera, et cetera. You know, scope two is um, is ancillary emissions and scope three is indirect, like supply chain and how do my employees get to and from work and, and how much carbon do they emit to do that? So our indirect emissions. Um, so that's my KPI there, right? Um, so, and this is a really important piece here. So KPIs, they have to, um, you have to have some sort of baseline and then you have to tell your reader, what are you doing now? And then you have to explain where you wanna go. Like, do I wanna increase this metric, decrease this metric? I mean, if you're trying to, you know, if you're talking about workplace safety, you wanna reduce the incidences. If you're talking about BIPOC, um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color in your executive management team or your boardroom, you want to increase the percentage. So you've got to tell your readers what you're trying to do. Um, you've got to be, you know, do it with enough, enough depth to tell the story, but you can't just bowl people over with way too much information because then too much just is sort of irrelevant. Stakeholder engagement, how well did you do identifying the folks that are gonna rely on the sustainability report and the folks that wanna have input into how you determine the KPIs and how you contextualize the performance. Um, obviously balance, I'm gonna the homework or the assignment um, really focuses on, you're gonna look at a report from PayPal and identify um, not just what they did um, according to the framework and the, um, standard that you're most interested in. How does that tie into the sustainable development goals? What are their accomplishments? And then did they report their shortcomings and their challenges and things that maybe they fell down on? Assurance um, refers to a third party that has audited or attested to the accuracy of your data. And then can you compare this uh, with other like kind companies? and um, how connected is the information to your business plan, your financial goals, um, et cetera. So as I said earlier, there's a ton of frameworks that, um, that have informed sustainability reporting, um, but what has sort of uh, come out as the top framework that's mostly utilized is the Global Reporting Initiative. It just celebrated its 25th anniversary in 2022, and they've standardized sustainability reporting. So um, they were founded in order to elevate sustainability reporting to um, with rigor and um, credibility. Uh, you know, in the old days, and still sometimes you'll see like these pieces are just marketing fluff, like go green and you know, we love the earth. And it's like, well, that's great. But like, where's the hard data that shows where you're coming from, what you're doing, where you want to go, um, and giving me some trends. So where does GRI come from? Um, after the Exxon Valdez spill in 1997, <clears throat> a coalition of companies came together um, and formed something called the Coalition of Environmental Responsible Economies, SEERS. And um, they crafted a set of operating principles called the SERIES principles, and um, which was like the, um, you know, the infancy stage of sustainability reporting. Like organizations need to tell us like um, what sorts of trouble they've got in. Like have they 
Have they had chemical spills? Have they, do they handle hazardous materials? Have they ever been fine, right? So it was more like um, penalization uh, oriented rather than um, positive visionary oriented. But it was the first time that anybody had really talked about a company sharing, you know, like opening up the kimono, so to speak, and sharing in a transparent mode what they had done um, where, where they'd fallen down. So environmental violations, uh, social justice issues, have they had any um, labor violations, those sorts of things. They part, uh, partnered with the United Nations Environmental Program in 2002. This made it, it's really scaled it up, gave it more credibility, um, grow, grow, grow. Fourth generation of guidelines came out in 2013. And then in 20, oh gosh, 20, I believe, um, the new GRI universal standards came out. And let me just be clear, and this is a massive, massive document um, that now not only guides us in assessing materiality and um, encouraging management to disclose uh, you know, their goals or governor, governance or environmental and social issues, but also they've now got a um, specific industry sector uh, guidance. So if I'm in coal or, sh uh, you know, shipyards or agriculture or uh, chemicals, there's really specific industry guidelines um, that, you know, meat packing that take me into these really specific industries to make it um, unpack those industries even more thoroughly. Okay, so an overview of the GRI framework. Um, okay, so oh, it was 2021. We're published in October 2021. They've been in effect since January 23. And um, so again here, how are you defining what you're going to report? We've already looked at some of these things. What's material? Is it contextualized? Who did you include in your stakeholder group? Um, and then here are the principles. And these are just basic. There's nothing revolutionary here. This is These are guiding principles for any, any data set, right? It's got to be um, replicable. It's got to be credible. It's got to be clear. It's got to be accurate. It's got to be timely. I mean, just all the things you would want from any data set, whether you're talking about, you know, I don't know, medical data or climate data or financial data or, you know, anything. These are just the attributes um, of that data. And then it's like, oh my gosh, where do I start? So um, I'm going to go ahead and pop over. I'm going to go to this next screen. Sorry. No. Okay. We'll, we'll go back to this. So we're going to go take a look at the GRI um, standards themselves, the universal standards themselves. Um, let me get through a little bit more content, and then we'll go do that. Okay, so this is back to this idea of stakeholders and who's at the table. And like this alone, if you're starting like from ground up as an organization, you know, can take, you know, should take a really, you know, not a long time necessarily, but be a really thoughtful process. Like who is reasonably expected to be impacted by my company's activity? So say I'm a veterinary pharmaceutical company, right? So I get raw materials, for my pharmaceuticals from China. So workers in China are impacted by my organization because they're the ones that are out there in the highlands of central China extracting, you know, the ketamine and the genomycin and the raw materials, the sulfites that go into producing my pharmaceuticals. Well, who else is impacted? Obviously, pet owners, um, you know, stockyards possibly, uh, stables possibly, okay, people that work for me, communities that I operate in. So, I mean, it's just getting like a list of stakeholders itself compiled in a meaningful way and then reaching out and being like, okay, well, I need small veterinary clinics and Conagra both at the table and I need uh, workers union reps that are manufacturing in uh, Oklahoma City 
at the table, but I also need some representation for the um, for the folks in Central Highlands of China. So, um, you know, there's a lot of folks that come in to that list. And then how am I going to gauge with them? Am I going to do it via, you know, Zooms? Is it going to be via questionnaires? Are, are some people actually going to get in a room together and talk about this, right? And like, this all costs money and takes time, right? Um, so then you bring them all together and your criteria are hopefully going to like sort of holistically emanate from those conversations. And again, ESG stands for environmental criteria, social criteria, and governance criteria. And governance sort of broadly refers to oversight, like who's watching, um, who's tending the shop. Right. It's, it's got to be partially your executive team. It's partially got to be your board. Do you have subcommittees? Do you have um, advisory committees? Do you have outside entities that helps guide this? Um, and again, you've got to make that connectivity just like assailing people with a whole bunch of data, not helpful. Um, sh making the connection between the data that you're sharing and your financial strategy and um, your company's products and goals and visions, that's helpful. And then you gotta have some strategy, something in place to train people because lots and lots and lots of folks um, have never seen this data and they're only used to looking at balance sheets and profit and loss statements. Um, so that's really important as well. So let's just look at um, this graphic for a second. So this is how, this was is from PayPal's um, sustainability report. I chose that just because everybody knows who PayPal is and, um, you know, they've purchased Venmo and uh, I mean, we just basically all know who they are, right? They're a, a digital, a digital financial um, services organization, publicly traded, international presence, okay, pretty big company. So they're trying to figure out how to prioritize which environmental social governance topics that they're gonna really get after and really try and measure and establish baselines for, et cetera. So here's our, here's our little mapping process. One is how important is this item to PayPal's um, business perspective? Like just flat out impact on business. And then here, the, the, the vertical axis is how important is it to their stakeholders? And they decided that the, to map out, <clears throat> to take the eight items that were most relevant to both parties, right? And this is what they're really going to focus on. So eight designated priorities, okay? What are they? Cybersecurity, data privacy, diversity, diversity, inclusion, equity, and belonging, climate change mitigation, financial health and inclusion. And remember, of course, finances, um, financial prosperity is one of the triple bottom line. So we're not, we've also got to talk about financial sustainability, um, employee wellness and corporate governance. And I mean, there's lots of other really important things here like you know human rights and sustainable supply chain management, et cetera. But you've got to map out what's the most critical and what's gonna tell your story um, with the highest amount of integrity. So, okay, we've got materiality, we've got our, um, our areas that we're targeting. Now we've got to get together a reporting team. We've got to have a kickoff meeting. We define our material aspects. Somebody in the organization, um, probably the chief financial officer, um, in uh, in cahoots with other high level managers are gonna have to have a resource allocation because they're, if you're bringing in new people to do this, that's an additional line item in your wages. And if you're taking um, existing folks and saying, hey, 20% of your time is now gonna be spent developing the sustainability reporting process in house, somebody else has got to backfill what they're not doing. So um, you've got a resource allocation yeah, project dates, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so there's six basic areas, this is really important, of um, performance. And this is how GRI uh, is established. There's economic performance indicators, 
environmental performance indicators. And then under social, there's some subsets. So there's human rights, there's labor practices, there's society in general, and there's product responsibility. So these are six very distinct areas and you can see each of them. So there's one economic, one environmental and four social. Each of those have a ton of subsets too, right? Um, and you, I'm not gonna sit here and read to you, but these are all areas that um, have many, many ways, each of them to report um, data on, report your metrics on. So let me just give you an example. So here, this is Timberland. And um, this came from the BSR report, but I just want to tell you the difference because people have a tendency to use these uh, three terms interchangeably and they're not. So a target is something um, that's measurable, attainable, realistic. So I want to reduce total waste by 50% by that's not a good number because we're already past that. Uh, I want to reduce total waste by 50% by 2040. The town of Missoula, the city of Missoula has got a zero waste by 2050 target. Okay, Missoula as a community will be producing zero waste by 2050. Okay, that's no uh, material, uh, physical materials waste, no carbon waste, no um, lawn and garden and, um, and organic waste. So like, that's the target, okay? What's the KPI? Well, the KPI is what's going on as we move towards that target. So um, current status, we've reduced waste by 30%. This year, we reduced waste by 2%. Boy, last year, we actually, our waste didn't vacillate at all. It stayed exactly the same. Um, compared to the prior year, even though we in instituted all these new initiatives. So boy, we better go back and revisit that. It's not working. Um, and then the metric is the actual standard of measurement. So if I'm measuring here um, tangible physical waste, uh, there was 46,000 metric tons of waste um, and there's 7.55 metric tons uh, per unit. I'm not quite sure what that per unit is. Um, so for example, here, like this is from the Timberland report. I guess I'm not coming up. Um, Timberland's 2022 sustainability report. So their target, and I'm not going to get this exactly right, but they're looking at, so mm -hmm. um, tanny leather is a very, very environmentally a uh, rough process that uses lots of um, very, very harsh chemicals to soften the leather and make it malleable and pliable and be able to sew with it, et cetera, et cetera. So um, from their report, they're mapping out product by product how um, they're measuring this target and becoming environmentally benign with their tanneries, right? So they don't wanna release any harsh chemicals into the environment with their tanning process. So they're going product by product and talking about how they're attaining that. So how does a company choose their KPIs? Well, you've got your stakeholders, you've defined your materiality. Um, you now have got to look and say, what do we have the capacity to measure? How are we going to accumulate the data? And is that going to significantly influence um, my stakeholders' decisions? And it really does at the end of the day, like if you're going to measure water, for example, like say you're um, Patagonia and you utilize, um, obviously water is utilized to uh, grow cotton and they utilize only organic cotton. Um, in their wool blend products, um, outdoor wear. So how am I going to assess that water? How am, am I going to be um, actually having folks down with the organic cotton farmers measuring the amount of water <clears throat> that they're utilizing for their crops? Am I going to compare that to a non-fiber, like a polymer? Okay, because polymers have chemicals, but they, they're not water intensive. Am I going to 
compare organic cotton to non-organic cotton is one more water intensive than the other. So you need to start thinking about how am I gonna tell the story around this very important issue? One of the things you're gonna be doing in this um, first assignment when you're looking at PayPal sustainability report is you're gonna be telling me how well do you think they use the KPIs to tell the story. Here, th this is not like every KPI has to have this, but it's just a suggestion to help you, um, again, contextualize a piece of data. So if I just tell you like, um, in our household, we use uh, 2,300 kilowatts of energy a year. Like, is that good or is that not good? I don't know. In my warehouse, I used 46, I emitted 460,000 tons of carbon between all my warehouses worldwide um, as Apple computer. Is that a good number, a bad number? Okay, how do you extract information about whether this is a good thing or not? Well, show me trends. Where have I come from, right? If this year I emitted 460,000, um, metric tons, and last year I emitted 500,000, and the square footage of my warehouses are the same, then that's making progress. I What's going on? Oh, well, I've converted partially to solar, I've got some wind turbines, or I've installed all new um, sustainable lighting, you know, so you've got to have some sort of trends or trajectory so you can see where you're coming from and where you're going. Um, what protocols did you use? Like, how did you measure your carbon emissions? Did you use the greenhouse gas protocol, the WRI protocol? Like, how did you measure it? Is, some, is it an authentic tool? Um, how are you presenting it? Are you using ratios? Are you using cumulative data? Or, you know, are you just dumping a bunch of raw data, which for most people, that's um, not particularly meaningful. Uh, so you, you can see here, you've got a, this is a little cute little footprint. Um, are you, how are you telling the story? Um, okay, so GRI, of course, recommends external assurance, which again is like an auditor. We've all heard about that for financial audits, but for sustainability reports, um, this is a really new area and there's a lot of uncertainty around it. I think we talked um, in the first lecture, um, the difference between limited assurance, which is just when you're starting out, and then reasonable assurance that means like, you know, really everything in this report is, you know, I can reasonably assure that it's accurate. Again, this is all a path, it's a process. Um, Yep, and then moving forward, where are we going? Well, again, you know, GRI is only 25 years old, which um, that's, it's still baby steps. And in the state that we are um, in globally, with sort of the urgency around fresh water access and assimilation of waste and carbon emissions, it's like, okay, we're all moving forward, just still learning so much about this. We're trying to integrate sustainability reporting with our financial reporting. We're just getting used to these new universal standards. Um, we're, we're just starting, or not just, but it's probably 10, 15 years old, starting to um, invest in companies based on indices that rate their sustainability performance. So we'll talk about that next week with um, from an investor standpoint, but like, I don't personally want to invest in companies that um, might have a subsidiary that's up in the tar sands, for example, in, uh, in central Canada. Uh, so like, I'm not opposed to investing in an energy company that's maybe still using some fossil fuels or emitting carbon, but they're really deeply committed to research and development in alternatives. So, okay, how do we rate these companies? How do we index them? How do we know as investors, um, employees, supply chain members, et cetera, what a company's really up to? And that's uh, through indexing and ranking. And this is a link actually to see published sustainability reports um, that are currently um, out there and being um, transmitted. 
Okay, this is a huge topic. Um, sorry if I went really fast through that. I would like to now come over and take a look at your assignment. So um, you can see that this is an assignment on GRI reporting. It's a multifaceted, so follow all these steps. So the first one is I say, utilize the link that shows us the connection between the GRI framework and the sustainable development goals. And choose an SDG that interests you, preferably not the same one that you used in the prior assignment in chapter two, unit two. Uh, so let's just take a peek at that. So, okay, that's, this is that link. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Sorry, let me go and see. Maybe I lost that because I had it up earlier. Um, okay, so this is, Okay, let's try one more time. Connection of SDGs and global reporting initiative. Okay, yay. So table of contents, here's the same 17 goals that we saw in chapter two. Now for the first time, we are tying these SDGs into global reporting initiative standards. So let's take a look at um what is the first sdg eliminate extreme poverty okay how am i going to measure that in a sustainability report if i'm complying with the gri index okay um so here are the standards and here are the targets as it pertains to um, poverty alleviation. And it talks a lot about some of the things that we've already been identifying. What's the business strategy around this? Okay, I only employ workers at a living wage. That is going to work to eliminate extreme poverty. I don't operate or I don't utilize labor in countries that have um, United Nations human rights violations, child trafficking violations, child slavery violations. So there's a series of disclosures and you can see here's the GRI standard that applies to the first SDG. The second SDG, um, this is around, sorry, I should probably know these off the top of my head. Um, hunger. The third one is around good health. The fourth one around education. Just a second. I've got a cat wanting to come up with that. Come on. Come on. Sorry. She would, he would just sit there and scream at me till I get him. Um, okay. So you can see all of the SDGs have got GRIs that go um, that tie them in. Now, let me just say this. That is not to say that every report has got every SDG and every GRI incorporated. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if there is a connection, you're going to find that here. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm asking you to do in the assignment. Let's go back in just a second. So choose one of the SDGs that interests you. Then you're going to go, this is just a print of number 13. Then you're going to go to the GRI universal standards. And that's down here under resources. Ooh, up here under resources, sorry. All right, universal standards. This is a zipped file. So when you open this, you're gonna get, uh, so I just downloaded it and then I go here and it's zipped. So you're gonna get 
a bunch. I don't know if you've ever really worked with these, but you're going to get a bunch of extractions, right? So here's, and you'll see like there was GRI 201 economic. Um, this is market based. This is indirect. This is procurement. This is anti-corruption. You can see the numbers. And if you remember on that first one, the 201s, so the the 200s are essentially um, economic GRI standards. This is anti-corruption, tax. Um, then we move on to resources or the 300s. So each of these standards, you would open separately the one that you're reporting on. Okay, so let's go back here. I just wanted to show you that that's kind of weird. And then I'm going to um, identify what I should disclose on my sustainability report. Okay, so you're tying in the SDGs and the GRI framework. Then the assignment itself is to go see if you can find your SDG goal and GRI standard in the PayPal report. So using this link, you're gonna to go to the PayPal sustainability report um, and lots of things aren't going to be in there. So you have to choose an SDG um, that you're going to be able to find in the PayPal report. And so in this part of the assignment, I would go to the table of contents at the beginning to locate the matrix or the table um, in the report that talks about the GRI framework. So if you go to the report itself, you're going to see at the very beginning, there's a table of contents. In the appendix, you're going to find um, where you're going to be able to um, tie in on page 38 the SDGs and uh, the GRI report, the standards. And you'll go there and then you'll find where in the report they talked about um, your SDG that interests you. And then the assignment is to write about it. So you're going to introduce your SDG, right? You did that in chapter two. Ending extreme hunger um, and extreme poverty. This one, I used SDG 13, which is climate risk. Okay, so you're going to accurately and thoroughly introduce your SDG, DG, and which category it's in. Then I want you, you're gonna go find it in the PayPal report based upon that table of contents. And you're gonna tell me how, how well you think they did in accomplishing sharing that data. Like, did they give you trends? Did they give you tables? Did they give you targets? What are the KPIs? Does it feel like they that there's data integrity? Did, what, did it seem to be a marketing ploy or was it solid and measurable? So tell me how well you think they did um, in accumulating the data and transmitting it. And then um, tell me what you think more you would like to have seen. Okay, so this is you're critically analyzing the report. So really probably where you should start um, is to take a peek at the report itself and then maybe back up and go to how the framework ties into the development goals and then go find your GRI standard. So that might be a little bit of an easier segue to really go look at the report and find out like what are they even reporting on first and then go choose, um, sorry, that was a little backward introduction, then go choose the SDG um, and GRI. And um, have fun with this. This is a really a pretty well put together report, in my opinion. So um, start to dig in and understand a little bit more um, about the process of reporting um, sustainability endeavors. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing your work. Okay, bye.